Guys, we need to talk about the aftermath of yesterday's crash. $700 million worth of crypto liquidated, gone, vanished in the last 24 hours today. I need to talk about why this happened. I need to talk about what I see happening next. Are we going to uh, come up to $45,000 again? Or are we going to now, once this stabilizes a bit, which it is doing right now, are we going to see another massive drop for Bitcoin here, perhaps down to $38,000? Guys, today I'm going to talk about exactly that. I'm going to show you the massive manipulation that happened yesterday. I will talk about why I think that most participants in the markets are wrong at this very moment. Also, of course, massive updates to my trading strategies here. So I I will update you on that as well. So welcome back everybody. My name is Chris bringing you cryptocurrency videos every day teaching you how to make money in this market. If you're new to the channel then make sure to subscribe and activate the bell right now. Okay so let's talk about this guys. So as you know huge panic yesterday when Bitcoin went from uh, $45,200 all the way down to $40,000. Now, this was in one hour, it was a 10% drop. And some people say like, this is nothing, this is nothing. No, this is actually significant, especially as people are already on their edge. They're waiting for what's going to happen. They're waiting for that price movement. So, you know, there was just a lot of interest in whatever happened here. And a lot of people acted on this price action. Now, for us, of course, we uh, have been using the trading strategies and I will get into that here soon. But first thing, what I want to show you is that look at this on the hourly time frame. This is so beautiful. We went down, but look at the bodies of the candles supported. Boom, right here. Big bounce. Bears try to push us down again. Boom, big bounce here as well. In fact, on Twitter yesterday, as this was all happening, I actually posted, hey, juicy price action. Will my red line manage to hold up the Bitcoin price? And it was looking like this. So this is when we were actually approaching it. And then we said, uh, or I said, is it actually going to save us again? Because we would have this wick or we were having this wick and the body of the candle was resting right on the red line here. And then I just uh, laughed at this because, yes, once again, the red line saved the entire crypto market, guys. My red line. No, um, but seriously, this red line is um, very, very important. This is why I always tell you that I still think my base case is for this red line to, uh, to hold up the Bitcoin price because this is such a fundamental support level for Bitcoin. Now, yes, we did wick down to it briefly, but then look at this massive run up. And as you know, you look at where the price went after that we actually did come down and hit it once again as well and we got supported and then now we are looking for potentially some higher prices here so massive drama yesterday guys now before i talk about the next move i see happening in my trading strategies and such let us just go through some of the numbers here so just like i showed you in the intro 700 million dollars worth of liquidations yesterday so a lot of people were liquidated on this massive event. So a lot of people were playing on leverage here, which is obviously if you do not know how it works and if you do not use good risk management, that is a very, very bad idea. And if we look at the cost for this drop, as you know, I did an emergency video yesterday and I talked about why we were seeing this drop and it all came from an analytics firm which said that the ETFs are going to be rejected and at that point you know some of the senior analysts came out you know Eric here said that like uh, well we are not seeing these reports like how how do you draw that conclusion that all of the ETFs are going to be rejected and now we have the answer my report is not based on any actual sources uh, there's not insider comments either this is just my personal opinion, basically, is what he said. So basically, the entire crypto market crashed because this guy had opinions about the markets were crashing. Now, Eric and these other guys, they're actually using sources. They're looking into sources from within the SEC. They're looking for different things when they post tweets, when they make reports or whatever. And uh, people were assuming that this guy was also doing that. But this was just his opinion that the ETFs were going to get rejected. And we do not know. Maybe they are going to re get rejected. Maybe not. But everything right now is pointing towards the ETFs not being rejected. And instead, they are going to get approved. But the timing was very, very particular. Because just like I talked about in yesterday's video, he released this article 
saying or this um, report saying that the ETFs are going to be rejected. He released it at the point when everyone were watching their charts, like with open eyes. We're just watching everything that's going on in the crypto space, just waiting to press that sell button, right? Because we were going to have that massive event and we're still going to have that massive event when the ETF is either rejected, delayed or approved, right? So everyone are uh, prepared to sell or buy Bitcoin. And then they see that article saying all ETFs rejected. And so they start to sell. And then you have this cascade, you have liquidations and you have everything going on. So the timing here was very, very particular. Now, I've talked during the last few days what I think is going to happen if the ETF is rejected, if the ETF is approved. I've laid out the exact scenarios I was expecting. However, one scenario that I was not talking about is the scenario where you have massive FUD coming out, which this was. And uh, I didn't talk about that because, I don't know, um, how can you kind of expect all of the FUD that is going to come out? I had no idea that there would be these firms pushing FUD at that particular point and that would have a, such a drastic effect on the market. So, yeah, that is what happened. But right now the markets are recovering and, uh, yeah, we're seeing potentially some more upside here for, for the foreseeable future, at least, unless the ETF gets rejected. Well, the good thing right now is that we have a hint of what Bitcoin was going to do if the ETF was actually rejected. So something like this massive drawdown, just like I've been saying. However, also understand that right now, a lot of the leverage has been flushed out of the market. In fact, if you go to the open interest right here, you can see that uh, actually at the top yesterday, we were at 20, almost, well, $19.3 billion in open interest for Bitcoin. Right now, we are sitting at only 17. So there's a two, more than $2 billion difference in open interest that has been flushed out. So this shows, or this means, that the next time you have massive moves, the market is not going to be as over leveraged, and you are not going to see as many cascades to the up or to the downside. So that is a good thing, in my opinion, that some of the leverage has been flushed out right now from the market. So now let's continue to talk about this ETF. So we already debunked this FUD by this analyst. And by the way, guys, Matrixport, which he was writing the analysis for, is actually funded by Jihan Wu, which if you do not know, is a massive supporter of Bitcoin Cash. And if you do not know, Bitcoin Cash supporters generally hate Bitcoin. They absolutely despise Bitcoin. This was going on in 2017, 2018 mainly. And since 2020, everyone forgot about Bitcoin Cash. Uh, but back then, it was a huge thing. It was a massive thing. And um, yeah, these Bitcoin Cash supporters absolutely hate Bitcoin. So it's not surprising that Matrix Port is actually co-founded by Jihan Wu, so, and that they put out this uh, and try to spread that fund. So now let's look at what's actually been going on here with the SEC. Well, what we do know, according to sources here, is that the SEC has been sitting down with the exchanges, so the NASDAQ, CBOE, and New York Stock Exchange, to finalize comments on the uh, kind of application submitted by the Bitcoin spot ETF issuers. So why is this important? Well, this is probably not something that you would do if you were going to deny or delay. You would not have meetings. You would just delay, delay it or deny it. We're hearing similar, by the way. And why, why, when we see updated final amendments roll out, it is a sign that the approval is imminent, as the SEC has been doing back and forth with issuers offline to perfect their, their uh, kind of applications. So as we know, the SEC has been meeting with these um, ETF providers. They've been trying to get them to kind of um, influence the actual applications and why would they do this if they did not have intentions of approving these ones. So for me, I still think that we are, uh, and this is also according to sources, sources close to the proceedings say that the SEC could begin notifying issuers of approval on Friday with trading beginning as early as next week. So I think that we are going to see the Bitcoin ETF approved. If we do not see them being approved, well, as you know, you already know my scenarios I've been talking about in my last couple of videos, but I still think it's likely that we are going to see those ones being approved. So that is fine and uh, still looking pretty good for the, uh, for the future. By the way, guys, if you look at the people that do not own Bitcoin right now, do not own any crypto at all, uh, this was a poll by 1,500 Americans, 
And they said with the spot Bitcoin ETF being approved, 21% of those would uh, now start to buy Bitcoin. They would invest into Bitcoin, right? So if you assume that 25% of people that do not own Bitcoin right now, 25% of those are going to start buying when the Bitcoin ETF is approved. So this just goes to show that over time, this is going to add more buy pressure for Bitcoin. So that is absolutely fantastic. Now, let's talk about, uh, well, before we talk about my trading strategies, let's first talk about uh, Ethereum and uh, the traditional markets here. So Ethereum, you can see on the daily time frame, Ethereum is still trading in within this range. So that is you know, very, very interesting that we're still in within this range for Ethereum. Yes, towards the bottom of this range, but this orange line held up the Ethereum price as well on the daily time frame. So that is very interesting to see. For traditional markets, we're actually seeing a quite significant downtrend for the S&P 500 here. So you can see we have this channel down since breaking basically this triangle formation here at the top and this is where i said that i do think that this is the local top for the traditional markets and that we are going to see some more downside for this but i do not think it is going to affect bitcoin and i still stand by that i do think that well now we have already had a pullback but i don't think that this is necessarily affecting bitcoin that much because bitcoin is a beast of its own right now at least until the spot bitcoin etf is approved now let's talk about the big stuff and that is actually my trading strategy so what happened as you know when i made my emergency video yesterday uh, all of these bots had accumulated all of their positions so they have been buying the dip all the way down here they were buying all the way down and this is the beautiful thing with using these trading strategies the most important thing though to add margin and as long as you had added margin and as long as you believed that we were going to eventually come up higher right that we would have a big bounce and that you are bullish on bitcoin what you would be doing, and just like I was doing here, you just can take a mojito, just watch the panic unfold. You are comfortable with your margin, you're comfortable with buying the dip, and you already had your plan from the beginning. You are not reacting to this, like, oh my God, what's happening, what's happening? Uh, you already have your plan from the beginning, and these trading strategies worked out very, very well. Now, all of these positions have been taken profit except for two. That is the Ethereum Fastbot and the Ethereum Cyclebot. In fact, those ones are still sitting at pretty juicy floating losses here, meaning the positions that they have been accumulated, uh, accumulating on the way down here are still sitting at a loss. Now, in total, of course, they're sitting at massive profit, but all the other bots, all of the Bitcoin bots and the Ethereum slow bot made such huge profit yesterday because what they did is they accumulated on the way down here and then they took profit on the way up exactly as you make the most amount of money in crypto so for everyone that just were using these ones and had added sufficient margin in general you made a lot of money on that bounce instead of losing a lot of money here on this downtrend so that is fantastic now what is the plan with uh, these ones that uh, are not um, or haven't taken profit yet, namely the Ethereum cycle and the Ethereum fast spot. Well, I'm just going to wait. Uh, if the spot Bitcoin ETF is approved, then they are going to reach their take profit price. And um, that is that. But for my next batch of bots, guys, what I am going to do is I will probably use only Bitcoin because now we have a lot of data. I've been using these trading strategies for, for over a year already. And by the way, guys, this is the profits you're seeing here is just the latest batch. These ones have been open for a few months, but uh, you know I've been using all of these ones, closing and opening bots for, for over one year already. And I will use Bitcoin moving forward uh, because right now we are, you know, we're getting higher and higher in terms of our prices. And the higher we go, the bigger the potential drawdowns are also going to be. Now, I just want to make that clear. The only reason is also because when you see a drop for Bitcoin, usually Ethereum goes down with it, but Ethereum goes down much lower. So instead of taking profit on that bounce, we are now stuck with these positions, which I do not mind in this particular case, because I still think that we are going to reach the take profit price for these particular bots for Ethereum also. But moving forward, and a lot of people are, you know, very stressed seeing, you know, 13 out of 13 orders being um, being filled here and they do not want to see like a big floating uh, loss here also this kind of uh, makes it a little bit skewed because as you can see all bots have been taking profit except for ethereum so if i only use bitcoin then you know it's not gonna be so uncorrelated it will be more correlated and uh, 
I think that that is a good thing. But I will keep you updated on that, guys. I will let you know more in coming videos about that. Now, for my bots on BitCat, still the same as on the bots on OKX because they're using the same settings. So the Ethereum fast bot is holding positions. The Ethereum cycle bot is holding positions. All other bots have taken profit already. And on the second account also, of course, same here. So basically all in all, big profits were made for us on this pullback and on that bounce in general. Now, the only final thing I want to see is for the... Uh, uh, yeah, the bots that are holding big positions here for Ethereum to also take profit. So we will see about that, guys. If you want to use these trading strategies, you can do so on OKX. You can try that first. Claim up to $60,000 first clicking on this link right here. Click join now. And then once you have signed up, you can use the bots using one click with these links in the description. If you want to use BitGet, uh, if you cannot use OKX, then click here, sign up, $8,400 in deposit bonuses, and then scroll down and click on, there's actually, this one is full, but this second link has still 56 spots left. So a lot of people actually jumped off the, like, closed their bots yesterday and took profit, that's fine. So that means that there's 56 spots left here currently on this second account so if you want to use those click on that link click subscribe and then use whichever bots you want to use here okay guys that is what i got for you thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you in the next one